everyone, welcome, hope you're doing well. Uh, so what we're trying to do uh, through this content and in this season is wrestle with what does it look like to practice the way of Jesus in everyday life in 21st century on the peninsula. So if you're in your well community or maybe you're in a pod and you're working through the content, I hope it is helpful. Uh, make sure to try the experiments, make sure to wrestle with the questions and I hope these uh, teachings, these conversations between Aaron and I are super helpful. Cool. So we're here talking about some of the spiritual practices, kind of what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday life. And today I just want to take a few moments and kind of talk with you about prayer. It seems yeah. like very basic, kind of one of those like... A pretty important. Pretty important, right? Like we always talk about prayer, but what exactly kind of does that look like and all of that sort yeah. of stuff. So maybe for you, like just maybe speak to maybe your own personal experience sure. and kind of what you've yeah. seen. I mean, it's been quite, been, a, yeah. quite a shift over time. So I remember when I was first introduced to the way of Jesus... Uh, I was at college and someone was like, hey, you know, prayer is like this. Just make a list of all the things you care about. And then every day, like, go through that list. Yeah. And initially, I was like, all right, I'm going to rock it. I went through all of them, you know, whatever. And I thought I was more faithful the more I had. <laughs> and then eventually, I started feeling guilty if I, like, dropped one off. Yeah. I was like, well, I still care about that. Uh, and prayer ultimately became this thing I hated. Yeah. Because it was this list, and I rarely wanted to do the list. And then I was like, well, do I even want to pray? Sure. Yeah. Um, and at some point, I can't remember exactly how it happened, but I realized, like, actually, prayer is not about a list. Yeah. It's about God. Uh, Tim Keller has this great quote. I jotted it down. It says, we should do everything possible to behold, behold God as he is, and prayer will follow. The more clearly we grasp who God is, the more our prayers shape and determine accordingly. So prayer ultimately starts with God, yeah. right? We don't start with a list. We start with God. Who God is. Yeah, and then yeah, we move character. towards God, right? Yeah. This is uh, Psalm 27.4. One thing I ask of the Lord, right? Uh, this only do I seek. I wrote it down so I remember. <laughs> uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord, to seek him in his temple, right? So it's this sense of, ah, I want to be with God. And yeah. it's because I want to be with God that I actually pray right so prayer again Keller is uh, seeking to respond to and connect to God, to who God and is. actually when we fail to pray it's not like because we missed line item 10 sure. on our list yeah. but because we're failing to treat God as God that's who he is yeah, yeah that's and actually yeah going God. to him right so failing to pray is saying yeah I'm not sure you really are the Lord of the universe that I should submit and dedicate my life yeah. to. yeah do you think there's like an aspect where it's maybe revealing a lack of trust in some ways mm -hmm. or a lack of understanding of who God yeah, is in some ways. That's probably know. true. Yeah. Like a prayerlessness is actually revealing more about sort of maybe where our heart's true home is. Sure, yeah. Um, yeah, that's yeah. a good question. No, yeah. And it, it just, it raised, the reason I bring that up is because looking even at how Jesus interacted with his followers yeah. and how he taught his disciples to pray yeah. very much. Kind of a famous the, prayer. Sure, yeah, right? Yeah. The Lord's Prayer. And the yeah. whole the whole first half of that, yeah. the framework begins with our Father in the first few lines That's of that good. prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be or honored, may your name be honored. Yeah. You know, and it's all about God, that framework of understanding yeah. who God is as Father. That's and good. It's in two, two sections or two passages in the Gospels. In yeah. Luke 11... And in Matthew 6, yeah. just a very sort of central totally. prayer for followers of Jesus. What I find interesting, though, about especially the Luke 11 yeah. story. Such a cool flow. Yeah, right? the way that it, that it works, the disciples come to Jesus and they say, Lord, teach us to pray. Yeah, Because they've watched him. They've watched him pray. Yeah, and not only have they watched him pray, but they've yeah. also seen him do so many other things, right? Yeah. Like walk on water, feed all these people, yeah, yeah, all these yeah. miracles, yeah. teach these amazing Bible studies yeah. or whatever. And the only time that the disciples ever throughout the four Gospels yeah. come to Jesus and have a line like, Lord, teach us to do something, uh, it's in the context of prayer. Wow. And it's never like, Lord, teach us to like multiply fish or teach us to walk <laughs> in the water or anything like sure. that. But Peter like, tries. Sure, yeah, he tries. Right? But I think they, they understand yeah. the importance of prayer in the life of Jesus yeah. and how central that was for him yeah. and his ministry his patterns, yeah. the way he lived his life in submission to the Father and interacted with people. And I think it speaks to what you're saying, the importance of prayer, first and foremost, being a connection to God, being in God's presence, yeah. understanding who he is, and that whole flow then of the Lord's Prayer mm. gets us kind of set in the right way, yeah. right? Our Father, understanding who God is, yeah. and then just even that, that section of Luke 11 begins yeah. to follow up. You know, if yeah. you, like as earthly fathers, you know, know how to give good gifts and yeah. 
But you're broken. You're broken, yeah. yeah. And that how much more will God, yeah. who is so generous, give to those who ask? And That's cool. The whole line of like, keep on seeking, keep on yeah. knocking, all of that. Because God is good. Yeah. Because like the prayer flows from that place of, hey, God is a, a good gift giver, right? Yes, the Father yes. is generous and kind and actually. He wants to be in relationship with yes. us. He wants to bless us. It's exactly what yeah, you're yeah. saying about understanding or what of, of who God is. And yeah. a failure. Really, to Keller should be a credit. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> same, all the same, right? Yeah. That that it's understanding who God is essentially becomes, if I'm hearing you right, almost this sort of motivation mm. to want to connect more with God. That's good. That I think the more that I truly understand the goodness and grace and yeah. love of the sort Father. Of there's like a drawing. There's in. a drawing in exactly yeah. of wanting to be That's good. in with. more connection with. Yeah. You just think of any human relationship, yeah, right? Totally. The more that you get to know someone who is really good and faithful and loving yeah. and caring, you want to spend be more in their time presence. No, with good. them. And I think there's something similar yeah. with prayer. Yeah. You know. Yeah. The other thing. So there's sort of the like, the prayer as list uh, versus prayer as being with. I also another way that sort of I approach it is. There's a, there's a way in which sometimes we approach prayer as like, I'm going to talk to God. Mm, yeah. Um, Almost like a laundry list. It, yeah, a laundry yeah. list. Or even just like, hey, let me tell you what's up. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like even a relational element. So like you can do the laundry list or you can say, hey, let me tell you about my day. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. But in any good relationship, there's usually a give and take. Yes. Uh, I remember at a guy who mentored me named David Alvarez and he's like, you know, Tony, you're great at talking to God. Why don't we learn how to listen to God? Hmm, and what we see in the scriptures, right, is through the prophets, like God is speaking, yeah. right? God speaks to Abraham. God is constantly speaking to us. To us, yeah. Right? He speaks to Jesus, then Jesus speaks those words. Throughout the Gospel of John, as we see, the Father says it, I then say, say it, right? Yeah. And we see this, God speaks through visions, he speaks through dreams, he speaks all these different ways. And I think prayer is also just, it's not only being with, but also listening to the speaking voice of God. Yeah. You know, and then, and I think that's like about our life, about our world, about his mission in the world. Sure. How do we know what to do? How do we know what to say? Well, part of that is informed by listening to what God has to say. To say, yeah. About how we, he wants us to live our lives. Yeah. Who he wants us to love. Maybe areas in our life that we need healing. Uh, maybe scriptures or pictures or dreams that he wants to share with us so that we can be shaped into his image. Okay, yeah. yeah. And this is your, what you're saying. This is more of what I think... It's called listening prayer. Right? Yeah. And this yeah. idea of not necessarily like verbalizing so much. Yeah. Like if, I don't know if the percentages are right, but if I think for most, you know, Christians, yeah. maybe prayer is like 90% I'm yeah. talking or saying something yeah. to God. Or, or saying, it's even like telephone. Tel it's okay. like, all right. So Aaron says, Hey, pray for my ankle. It hurts. And I say, okay, God, like I pray for Aaron's ankle versus all right, Aaron. Your ankle's hurting, aren't it awesome? Anything else? Great, whatever. Sure. Then we say, all right, let's see what God has to say. Yeah. And, and now then, I'm praying for ankle, but maybe I'm also listening to maybe something God has to say. Sure. It's not about your ankle, but about your heart. Okay, yeah. And so you're, what you're saying then, and if I'm hearing right, that implies there's moments of like pausing, yeah, great. silence, totally. like yeah, yeah. waiting. Like, yeah. It's not like an instant yeah, yeah. sort of thing, right? Yeah. Is that... It's like there is space in the conversation. Sure, yeah, it's totally. not like you talk, I talk, you yeah. talk, I talk, close it. You close know, it yeah. Like, Oh, no, good. Should God have space? Sure, yeah. That, that's, that's a great No, it's good because I think, I don't know, for me, like my yeah. personality is I just want to like, you know, get things done. Yeah, yeah. And so sometimes when I bring that into my prayer life, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there's like not enough of whether it's mm. patience or just the ability to slow down. Like a holy lingering. Yes. In just, the presence of exactly, God. Exactly, yeah. God to say, hey, might you have something? Something that you... Yeah. Like when you initiated or when you entered into that moment, you weren't prepared for it, yeah, but then God wants good. to do something maybe that you weren't expecting. Yeah. In and like moment. a stopwatch might not work because maybe if you're like the best listener in the world, sure, yeah. you're like, okay, God, here's five seconds. That's enough. But yeah. most of us, our ears and our hearts are not attuned to God's voice enough to be like, all right, God, here you go. Here's your two second sure. break. Yeah. It's like, eh, we probably need a little space Yeah. because we're actually not that great at this. Totally. So and we actually might need to increase the percentage of listening in the prayer experience just so we're learning how to listen. Learning how to listen, which implies that you say learning like there's a practice involved. Yeah, in that's so good. There's not like a, you know, you're going to be like a, a master at this yeah, yeah. on day one. Yeah, yeah. I'm a prayer master. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not like a, you know, Jedi master in prayer yeah, 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 on day good. one, but you're learning just what it means to hear God's voice. I think this also implies there's an element of rootedness in the scriptures, yeah. knowing God's character, knowing what does and doesn't align with mm, God's heart and will. That's good. 
um, being in relationship with other people who yeah. maybe are older, wiser, maybe have, like you mentioned, your friend and mentor yeah. who has experience in this way of praying in a more slower, listening sort of posture. Yeah. I think incorporating all those pieces, I think, would seem to me help someone That's good. as they're trying to navigate this and kind of incorporate this yeah. into their life. I don't know if that... Yeah, it totally resonates. Yeah. And I would say two practical things for me flow out of a story. So Martin hmm. Luther, or maybe three, <laughs> uh, Martin Luther had this uh, barber he used to go to. And the barber, you know, and go and, you know, cut his hair, obviously. And one day the barber's like, hey, can you teach me how to pray? Mm. And Martin Luther, a great theologian, he's like, let me think about it and write something. Yeah. So he's like, all right. He writes him a letter and he says three things. He says, you know, prayer is actually a habit formed through practice. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? So that's number one. Tip number one. Like, if you want to be a person of prayer, you can't just show up and expect to be like, you know, this like prayer Olympian. Totally. Day yeah. one. Like, it's a habit through practice. A daily connection to yeah. God. Uh, hopefully more than once a day. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, daily habit and he says too it's usually at the beginning and the end of the day yeah so you bookend your day yeah. saying all right god this is about you not about me sure and then three he said one of the helpful tools is actually as you were saying like the scriptures is actually like take a section of scripture maybe like the lord's prayer yeah and just read through it and as you read through it as things sort of jump out to you right so you, let's say you take the lord's prayer our father oh god thank you for being my father mm, yeah right and you just Ah, holy is your name. Yeah. Oh, God, I am just so grateful that you are holy. Yeah, and now you're being a Now you're praying in yeah. Scripture, yeah. Um, and it's like this, it's a sinking, a deepening of the text in the yes. presence of God, yeah. the one who wrote the text. Sure, yeah. Right, Jesus, yeah. like, you said this. Oh, Jesus, thank you for giving us these words. Yes. Right now it's Scripture, prayer, sort Back of flowing yeah, together. together. Yeah, that's good. No, I think that's really important. I think even, too, when I think of my own prayer life and kind yeah. of incorporating that, I love just being able to pray through scripture. I think yeah. of the Psalms being just yeah, a great resource totally. with some of that. Reading it slowly, kind of one time through or with some friends. Yeah. And then you've done this with me too. Like is a word or phrase stand out yeah. to you? And just kind of praying through mm -hmm. that word or phrase and just being able to incorporate the text into that. Yeah. And what else might God want to say Obviously, through the text yeah. and through those prayers, through someone else or whatever yeah. the case may be. But just slowly repeating that process of reading, mm -hmm. praying through the text, maybe yeah. over... You know, hopefully you have some time to do it, but you can yeah. linger, like you're saying, yeah. in God's presence for, you know, who knows how long yeah. in that. And I think also, too, not only the Psalms, but also so many of uh, Paul's prayers, right? Yeah. Uh, so many of what he's writing to in the churches are very God-centered, mm. very just good. elevating who God is. And just being able to pray some of those, yeah. you know, would be a very kind of good way, if you will, to just yeah. pray through no, it's good. who God is, understanding who he is, and incorporating that into yeah. you you know, one's life. Well, and I think maybe just one last comment is more, uh, you know, often we think of prayer as like, I'm going to take 10 minutes in the mm -hmm. morning. Yeah. I'm going to rock it. Um, but then like, as we're sort of talking about this, like prayer is not about that task you do for five yeah. minutes. It's yeah. about being in the presence of God, right? This is the reframing of pray without ceasing. Sure, yeah. Right. This idea that like, Hey, we're meant to actually live in the presence, presence of, of God. God. Yeah. So it's not the five minute quiet time. Prayer maybe starts there as training. Sure. But that's the habit that forms us into the person who lives in the presence of God all the all time. All the time. Yeah. Which is the hope. The, the hope. Outcome, yeah. The goal. Sure. Yeah. And that's just a beautiful invitation. Just totally. to be that kind of people that live in a constant state and awareness to God's presence. Yeah. In our lives. That's good. So maybe maybe this one. Let's end in prayer. Let's do it. Yeah. God, yeah. I just am so grateful for your goodness to us. And God, for all of us, whether Aaron and I or our folks listening to this video, we just pray that there would be a holy moment right now. God, when just the reality and the thickness and the goodness of your presence would just descend. And God, we would know in the inner parts of our being, in our bones, in our marrow, that you are good and that you are holy that you are beautiful, that you love us. Not just an unrelenting, never giving up kind of love. And God, I pray that that would be the springboard of our connection with you and our experiments this week. In the holy, amazing, and powerful name of Jesus, I pray.